Hi guys, we are back with our, another podcast video, and today we're having Mr. Sachin with us. So very welcome to Sachin Pole, Mr. Sachin Pole. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for and, having me. And yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, let us start uh, uh, with the uh, with your introduction. Please introduce yourself and tell us about your profile and all. Sure. So my name is Sachin, and I am a digital admissions coach. So in 2019, I scored a perfect 340 on my GRE, and I applied, and I got into the University of Pennsylvania for my master's program. And uh, now I'm a digital admissions coach. You know, I help other students. You know, take the GRE. You know, apply to college and all that. And you know, we have our own digital coaching admissions company, and you know, we try to give out free information to students uh, looking for. basically to learn more about what kind of programs you can specialize in what kind of universities are awesome how to apply how to study for the GRE and we also have you know programs on you know how they can, how they can train themselves for the GRE build a stronger profile you know build a strong sop you know like kind of stuff and so that's what we do oh that's really great and what motivated you to get uh, for doing your masters from usa i suppose um i i had already completed my bachelor's degree and you know i was working at the time and i realized that I sort of saw where I was working. I sort of saw ahead. Okay, like in ten years from now, if I was in this exact same position—not a position, but like in this path—where would I be? And I realized that you know, while I did like my work, I didn't exactly like the projection that I was coming up with. So I decided that you know, having um, a master's degree or like another degree would help me sort of orient my career in a direction where I wanted to go. And of course, a master's degree from like a great university and stuff would help me um, basically, like you know, accelerate my career path and all that. So that's how I decided to decided to to, to take a master's degree. Okay, so why did you prefer USA only? Like there are so many countries, Germany, Australia, and there are so many uh, countries like that. Why did you prefer only USA for it for pursuing your masters? I suppose the simple answer is that you know my dad is like obsessed with American degrees because he stays in Canada and he sees all his colleagues, you know, all his successful colleagues have like degrees from America. So he was like, you know, you're only getting an American degree. But I was more than happy to go along with it because as as I looked through the top universities dot com, you know, like the QS rankings and everything. I saw that the best ranked universities are in the US. So if you just if you just check the rankings, you will see that the rankings are dominated by American universities. So if you want quality of education, like the number one place is going to be the US. So I was more than happy to just you know like apply to the US, just like he wanted. So uh, can you tell us about some of the factors that must be taken care of while applying to masters in countries like USA or you, especially in USA? Sure. So, especially in the U.S., I'm not sure if there's anything that pertains to particular to the U.S. I guess yeah. if we're looking at a, I guess if we're looking at a factor that's only you know mainly in the U.S. is the GRE, right? Yeah. Because other countries there are like a few universities here and there that ask for the GRE, but then the U.S. is like the biggest place, uh, you know, for why you would need the G, why you would need to take the GRE, right? So GRE is like a pretty big factor there, right? On top of that, of course, your GPA is important, and um, beyond that, your research or projects and stuff, and that's going to be like the most important parts of your application. Right. Besides that, of course, your SOP. You need to have like you know strong career goals, you know communication skills, and all that. And letters of recommendation. It should be like you know good letters of recommendation, not like basic stuff like this is a good student, please. Like this, this person is a good student, please take him to your university. Not basic stuff like that. But you know good letters of recommendation. So those are the main core elements of a profile. Beyond that, of course, you have other things that might help boost your profile. Stuff like internships and work experience and entrepreneurship experience and extracurricular activities and basically all the other kind of stuff. Right. So everything else is nice to have, but the core elements are like GPA, GRE, research projects, SOP, and LOR. Yeah. With this question, I would also like to ask another question that we have also seen many profiles who has scored very less in GRE, like three hundred or two ninety six even, and less in GPA also. but still they got uh, admits from good universities like steven institute of technologies like that so what do you think what are the key factors that they actually showed them that that really helped them to get into that university mm -hmm. so what they do in the us and not even just the us i guess every single place when you apply for a masters program is they do something called a holistic evaluation okay yes. so if one or more areas of your profile is weak all right first of all that's not good So you need to make sure that you compensate it with some other areas, right? So you need to have like spectacular research work or like spectacular projects or one like national level competitions and all these kind of things or international competitions and all that. 
So if you do have, let's say you have a low GRA, let's say you have a low GPA, okay, how are you going to make up for that? Maybe you have like spectacular research work. Maybe you have like two or three research, pa research papers in like international journals and all that, like, so, you know, Springer papers and stuff. Uh, maybe you have like letters of recommendation from like really well-known professors. Like maybe you did like an internship abroad, like a research internship abroad and got a professor um, to like, you know, write your recommendation letter. And it was like an awesome recommendation letter from someone who holds clout in the industry. So these kind of things can really make a big impact when you are applying to college, right? So, but generally for most of us, normal human beings, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a little bit of everything so we can create a well-rounded profile, okay? But if you are spectacular and if you do have those kind of amazing research work and stuff, then you do have a chance of getting in, even if you don't have the best GPA or GRE score. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So moving on to the next question, many of the viewers might be knowing about your GRE score that is a 340 and 340, which is, four, which is spectacular. And your TOEFL score was, I guess it was around 116 or 116. Correct, 116. Right? 116. Yeah, so... Do, Okay, so I think you're the perfect person to guide anyone. Like, how should one approach and how should one uh, prepare for the examinations like GRE, TOEFL, and RLs? So, do you have any tips for them? Sure. So, first thing is to take your GRE more seriously than the IELTS and TOEFL. Because I'll just start with the IELTS and TOEFL. The IELTS and TOEFL is just used as a cutoff, right? So, if you go to universities, you'll find like a cutoff score for TOEFL that put like, say, 95 or 100 or 105. And for IELTS, again, they'll have like 6.5, 7, 7.5 cutoffs. Um, and all you have to do is you just have to clear those cutoffs. So if you clear those cutoffs, then nobody cares about your score, right? If you're below those cutoffs, then it's very unlikely they'll even like look at your application. I say to make sure that you absolutely clear those cutoffs. So to clear those cutoffs, again, um, if you are someone who is fluent in English, it's not a big deal at all. And you would only take like maybe two or three weeks of preparation. If you're not fluent in English and you're really struggling with the IELTS, then I would recommend that you know you go to some classes, get some maybe like a bunch of resources, study for like maybe one or two months and you don't really get a good score to beat those cutoffs. Because if you don't beat the cutoffs, then you're just not getting in, right? Now for the GRE, it's a little bit different. There's no cutoff, right? It's just the better the score, the better it looks on your profile. And right? that's just how it works. So for the GRE, how you prep, I usually, I usually recommend that students get like one introduction book, one practice book, and then that they come to my webinar, right? So one, and one introduction book, the best introduction book for the GRE is the, it's called ETS Official Guide to the GRE general test, right? So that's like a book by ETS, the people who make the exam, and that's like an awesome book, right? But it doesn't have a lot of practice. It introduces you, it introduces you to the exam, so it's fantastic, but it doesn't have a lot of practice. So for practice, I recommend students get the Manhattan Five Pound, right? So these are books that I used. The Manhattan Five Pound Book of Practice Questions, I believe it's called, and that has like, you know, a ton of practice, no problem. And of course, you're gonna need a lot of strategy to, um, you know, solve all these things, solve all these questions and stuff. And that's what I came in. So like we offer like a free webinar to students who, you know, just show up on our YouTube channel or Instagram page or our website and stuff. And they can just, you know, watch the webinar, get some free strategies and, you know, apply them to their preparation. So it's a combination of, you know, introduction, then practice and strategy. Wow. So what do you think? How much time is it is needed to prepare for GRE? Because you have told about the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend for the GRE, uh, the recommended time is three to four months for the GRE. Okay. Minimum of two months if you want to see like any kind of score jump from your initial score. If you have longer than that to prepare, of course, you can go for it. You can start preparing slowly, you know, by improving your English or maybe doing some math problems here and there just so you can, just so you can brush up on the concepts and all that. The recommended time for prep is three to four months. Okay. So moving on to the next question. The next question is related to the SOP. <clears throat> we both know that you are the one who reviews the SOP and you must be so much experienced in this field. So do you, have you noticed any mistakes? Like most of the students make these mistakes and you want like uh, none of the students should be making these mistakes, if you can point out. Sure. So one thing about the SOP is it, it's not like any other essays that we've written in school or like in college or anything like that. So when students, you know, write an SOP without having proper instruction on how to write an SOP, you make a lot, you see, you tend to see a lot of these common mistakes. So the biggest mistake that I've seen is that, you know, people tend to talk about themselves too much. And I know it's called a personal statement. So it's, it's supposed to be about you, but it's also about where you want to go. Right. So it's also about, you know, why are you applying to the program? Why this university? What excites you about uh, this program? What are these courses that you want to take? Uh, what are your career goals? You know, where do you want to go um, with this degree and all that? Right. So that means you focus a little bit about on your future as well. Right. So usually we recommend like a 60 40 split. 
So 60% should be about your past. Okay. Like what are the projects that you did, internships that you did, your college experience, your work experience, all that kind of stuff. And then 40% about your future. Okay. Why are you applying to this program? Why this degree? What courses are you excited to take? Uh, what are your career goals? How, are the, how is this degree going to help you with those career goals? So on. Right. So I recommend that, you know, if you're writing an SOP, try not to focus too much about your own projects and stuff. Keep that to like 60% and then focus 40%, you know, on the future where you're going, why you want the degree and all that. And another huge mistake that I've seen is that people tend to talk about stuff that happened before college. So they'll say that they won some competition in eighth grade, like some mathematical competition in eighth grade. And that's why they should be admitted for a master's program. Like that's, that's completely useless, right? So try not to talk about anything that happened before college. because in, for, in, for the most part, it's going to be irrelevant to your SOP. So try to stick to your achievements in college, your experience in college and after. Okay. So do you want to tell about something uh, which is related to SOP? And we have also seen that in your website, which is sachinpolit.com, you also review SOP. So do you want to tell about, about that? Um, so we do, of course, like my website, like you said, sessionpill.com. So we do a bunch of things, right? We have like our like free resources section, but we have like this entire blog where we just sort of give information on guides to different programs, right? So we have guides to say fashion designing, we have guides to, uh, cybersecurity. So we have all these kind of different, um, sub degree, I guess, like specialization guides and stuff where people can just learn more about the specialization. Um, what are the requirements to apply to that specialization? What are some good universities to apply for that specialization? You know, aerodynamics, aeronautical engineering, biotech engineering. So we've done, we've covered a lot of stuff. And on top of that, we do have like two free webinars where uh, one of one of the free webinars is about GRE preparation, right? Like I mentioned, the GRE strategy, GRE strategy webinar. And then another webinar is about SOP preparation. So like, how do you draft your SOP? It's called three secrets to a killer SOP. So like, you know, three things that you should be focused, you should be focusing on when writing your SOP. And on top of that, we do have, of course, our paid programs, which is, of course, our review service. So we do review like SOPs and we're going to launch um, later this week our, our GRE AWS essay review service. So if you guys are taking the GRE and you know, you're sort of trouble, you're, you're not exactly sure how much you're going to score on the AWS essay and you don't want to you know, risk it and just get some random score, then you can, of course, opt for our service and we'll let you know, okay, what kind of score you would get, how you can improve your essay, how you can improve your writing and so on. And we do have like, you know, GRE training programs as well as university application bundle programs. So like how to prepare your SOP, how to shortlist universities, how to get like awesome recommendations, how to um, build your profile, all these kind of things to help you prepare to college. So we basically just kind of provide solutions for students looking to apply to master's programs. Wow, that's really nice. So I had one more question, which would be an addition to the previous question about the SOP. As you said that one should not uh, describe the whole CV while writing an SOP, while writing the SOP. So what should... And what should exactly a student do? Like uh, if he's not describing the CV, he will not be able to write about the internships and trainings that he did during his bachelor's or, or her bachelor's. So what should one do? Like you're telling that you should not describe your CV while writing the SOP. But on the other hand, you are saying that you should describe about the internships and trainings that you did during your bachelor's. So what should a student do in this thing? It's about highlighting, right? So generally what happens is your resume is going to be filled with all sorts of stuff right? Maybe you're going to have more than one internship. Maybe you're going to have more than one project. Maybe not those, maybe not all those internships are great. Maybe not all those projects are great. Maybe, um, maybe you joined a bunch of clubs and some of those clubs, again, are irrelevant to your program that you're applying to. Maybe they're just not great clubs. You don't have great experiences. So it's not about describing every single thing, right? It's about describing the highlights, right? And the parts that are relevant to your path. Right. So where were you like, you know, in your college, what did you do and what's brought you here today? All right. Why are you applying? Right. And tell us about the highlights of your path. That's basically what an SOP is. So that doesn't mean you talk about every single thing that happened to you from day one in college. You talk about the best parts and you talk about the parts that have sort of motivated you to apply for a graduate program, motivated you to pursue a career in this path and so on. Right. So it's all about highlighting what happened, all the things that you did rather than just sort of blindly listing out every single thing. So let us suppose that there is a student who is interested in a uh, master's uh, in the field of renewable energy. Okay. And during his bachelor's, he did around two to three internships, all related to renewable energy and all related to, let us suppose it's about solar energy only. Then what should he do? Should he involve uh, all three internships in the, SO <clears throat> in the SOP or not? Okay. So it depends on what other stuff the student has to talk about. So suppose that Everybody has a bachelor's thesis, right? So let's say that the student has three internships and then one bachelor's thesis, right? So then he can talk about all those internships and his bachelor's thesis, so long as it fits within that 60% of the, 
of the SOP, right? So instead of talking about the internship in detail and you know what you did and what the company does and all that kind of stuff, and you can, if you feel that you know there's a lot of other stuff that you want to talk about, you can just club those internships together. You know, I did an internship here, here, and here, and um, through these, I gained the following skills, and I realized that you know this is really the field for me, and I really enjoyed um, you know taking. You know, applying these skills, you know, whatever renewable energy skills, maybe some designing and stuff. And I, that's, that's, that's when I realized is the kind of career that I want to go into. Okay. So that way you're not actually discuss detailing each and every single in each and every single internship. Rather than that, you're talking about, you're taking the essence of the internship, which is what exactly you gained and how it sort of motivated you to apply to graduate school and how it's prepared you for graduate school. Right. So that's the logic. There's a little bit of a nuance to writing it. Okay, so the last point is that uh, it all depends on the way uh, you are drafting the SOP. Right, uh, nothing exactly. Nothing more than that. Exactly, okay. yeah. So coming on to the next question, uh, which factors do you think matters the most in a profile that university uh, seems to be interested in? Right. So as I mentioned, the most important the most important elements are your GPA, GRE, and your research slash projects. Right? So these are the most important. And of course, your SOP and LOR will also pay, play a strong role. Everything else like work experience and internships and like I said, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial experience, all that kind of stuff, extracurriculars, all that is extra stuff. Nice to have, but not the most important thing. Right? People get admitted on their GPA, GRE, and research projects and stuff. So those are the most core elements. Those are the core elements of your profile. But but what if, if a student is applying for master's in engineering and not in master's of uh, MS? Like there are two things like um, uh, master's of engineering and master's of science. So if mm -hmm. a student who is applying for a non-thesis program, is it mm -hmm. important for that student uh, to publish papers during the bachelor's? Is it? Not at all. Not at all. So that's why I said research slash projects, right? So research work is, of course, going to be better than projects. So if you have research work, that's going to be better than having just a project. Okay, because what the research work means is it's like a stamp of approval given by professors, you know, from a peer reviewed conference or journal stating that, okay, this work is awesome. It's, you know, contributing to science and all that. And the authors, you really have, authors have really come up with something good here. Right. So it's like a nice stamp of approval. Whereas if you have projects, so you, can, you can totally have projects on your own. Like people have projects, um, people work in Baja and stuff, you know, they have projects. People work in Supra and stuff, you know, they have projects there. And all these kind of competitions and stuff, those can count as technically projects. You're basically contributing towards a project, right? You may even have personal projects, you may have group projects and so on. So even projects are perfectly fine. They basically want to see, like, have you taken your knowledge from college and have you applied it somewhere, right? Are you just, you know, grabbing information or are you actually putting that information to use? Are you creating things? That's what they want to know, right? So research slash projects. So research is better than projects, but if you don't have research, it's okay. You still need to have projects. Okay. So with this point, can you say about your website a bit so that students can come to your website and they can check if whatever they need done? So like what are the services you provide and what are the other things that you provide? Sure. So at our website, you know, sachinpilla.com, we have like a bunch of stuff. Basically, everything is aligned for students to apply to college abroad on their own, right? So we have a bunch of free stuff, which is, you know, we have like our blog where we sort of delve into each specialization um, that can be offered by universities, you know, for example, food technology, biotech engineering, fashion designing, aerodynamics. We do like cybersecurity. We do like a bunch of like, we did basically do like a bunch of blog posts on all these different specializations that uh, students can specialize in. For their master's program on top of that uh stuff like you know how to find free education what are the, where are the countries where there's like uh like a lower tuition fee um and all this kind of information that will help students apply to college right that's like our blog section on top of that we do have like uh two free webinars where we sort of um one of the webinars is a gre strategy webinar so we just give out you know free strategy like i give out my gre strategies to students for free you know that they can just use in their preparation and we also have an sop drafting webinar again also for free so it's just a webinar that students come and attend and they learn all about um, SOP creation and all that kind of stuff, right? And like, you know, basically all the nuance of writing an SOP. And on top of that, we do have, of course, our paid programs and our paid services. So we have like a paid service where we review SOPs, you know, for a fee and we sort of tell you guys how you can improve your SOPs and all that. And then we do have a service where we, um, 
and then we and then we do have our GRE training programs where we of course train students to get an awesome score in the GRE. And then we have our university application bundle where again we teach students how to write an awesome SOP, how to create an awesome resume, how to build your profile, how to hunt for scholarships, how to get recommendation letters, how to um, shortlist universities, basically the entire admissions process. So we do all these kind of things and everything's available on our website, suchinplayer.com. Great. Really I think every student should every yeah. every student should visit your website. Yeah. Okay then. This was the last question for this podcast. We'll end this podcast here only. Thank you so much, Sachin, for joining us and doing Thank such so an informative much. podcast. Thank you so much, Sachin. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.